Hi everyone, I'm Jay, and in this video I'll be talking about circuits. First, let's go over um, capacitors and inductors. So first, capacitors. What a capacitor does is it effectively stores energy. And how it works is if current is going to the right, since current is defined as the flow of positive particles, a positive charge will build up on this plate and it'll interact through electric fields to boot out positive charge on the other side to make current flow this way again and then leave out a negative charge on there. And so it'll build up some charge here, some positive charge on the left and then some negative charge on the right. The um, behavior of this is that at first, because there's no other, um, you know, at, at first it's all neutral particles on, on the plates, the uh, current will flow through just as if there's no resistance, it's a resistanceless wire. But as charge builds up on the plates and there aren't enough neg uh, neutral particles to boot positive you know, particles out, right? So there's not um, enough particles on this plate here to make the, the current flow. And so for a long time, once after charging up the plate, it'll reach a maximum kind of a maximum charge and then there won't be any current flowing through it anymore. Um, the last bit that you need to know is that it has a delta V or a, uh, you know, voltage difference of Q over C. And it's the same uh, sign, you know, that you put the same sign as you would for a battery. So if you're going from positive to negative, so if you're going this way, then it's a negative Q over C. And then if you're going this way from negative to positive, Right, so you remember, think about the electric fields here. Going against the electric fields, in delta V should be a positive charge over C, uh, Q over C. Next is the inductor. Um, and so if you don't quite remember inductance, this is pretty crucial for understanding how an inductor works. Um, so if you go watch the inductance video, go do that. Um, Remember, an inductor is more uh, inductive if there are more uh, coils through it because you add up flux, called flux linkage. And how it works is basically, as current goes through it, any time there's a change in current, it tries to, it induces an EMF this way, in the other direction. And so how this behaves from time zero to some time, a long time after, is that at first, no current will flow through um, because it's so, it's so reactive to that, that it, you know, produces exactly the opposite EMF and no, no current will flow. But then, um, because no current will flow, uh, the back EMF will kind of curve down and then it'll eventually, you know, at a long time after be basically resistanceless. Um, and so kind of the opposite of a capacitor. The change in V or the potential difference, the potential drop across the inductor depends on the direction of current. And so if you're going with current, so this way here, then it's negative L D I D T. But if you're going with current, so this way, I'm sorry, against current, it is positive L D I D T. And so just to review, at T equals zero, the capacitor behaves like a resistanceless wire and current flows through like normal, like it's not even there. 
But for the inductor, because it produces that back EMF, it no current goes through the inductor. But then for a long time, after the, you know, when T is much greater than their characteristic time constant, then it flips because the capacitor has no more charges uh, to boot out. And so no, char no current can flow through the capacitor anymore. On the other hand, because the inductor got used to the change in uh, current, now the inductor behaves like uh, resistanceless wire, and it's like not, it's not even there. And so let's go over specific circuits now. So this is the RC circuit, and we're going to assume it's currently charging, right? So you have the battery, the resistor, and the capacitor that's charging up. Um, first, because we know it's charging, we have I equals positive dQ dt, right? So the more current there is, the more charge there will be on the capacitor. So if it's charging up, then it's the same sign, right? So the more charge means more current has been building up the positive charge on a capacitor. Okay, so now that we have that defined, let us find Q, right? So we have epsilon minus dQ dt r minus Q over C equals zero, okay? And so let's first isolate dQ dt. And so doing some quick mind math, this is epsilon over R minus Q over RC. Uh, let's make this CE minus Q over RC. Okay. Um, next, we have to do the integral. Okay, so I divide the numerator above. So one over C E minus Q dQ equals one over R C dT. And I take the definite integral of both sides. And I want it from zero to some time t. So let's make that t prime. And so q at zero, since we're assuming it starts at zero, is zero to some charge as a function of time. Okay. And so what we get is we have uh, negative ln. So the negative is from the negative q in a, in a denominator, ln of uh, C E minus Q and then evaluated from zero to Q. So on the bottom is should be zero. So it's C E equals T over R C. Doing some more mind math, right? So moving the negative to the other side, making that E, we eventually get Q is equal to C, or let's actually um, make that a function of time. So Q is a function of time, right? Is C E one minus E to the negative T over R C. So this, this jump was just some algebra. To solve for I, we said that I was the positive DQ DT. And so we just take a derivative and we should get C E E to the negative T over RC. Okay. And that's how you solve for RC circuit that is charging. For an RC circuit that is discharging, it's slightly different because now there's no battery. And now that it's discharging, the current is actually negative dq dt. The reason it's negative is because the more current there is, 
the less charge that is on a capacitor, right? So the more current that's out in a circuit means the, the charge on the capacitor is draining and it's leaving the capacitor. And so that's why there's that negative sign. I'm gonna make that a little prettier. D, Q, D, T. Okay. And so now we do the same uh, kind of solving here. So we have D, Q, D, T is equal to uh, Q over R, C, right? And we can do the same kind of thing here. So Q, D, Q is equal to one over R, C, D, T, integrate. So we have the initial charge C, E, Right, because we know from the previous part that it charges up the CE and then you know it kind of stays at that. And so after a long time, we switch, we flip the switch. And so the charge here starts at CE. Oh, so that should be so the initial charge after you know initially right after the switch flips to two is CE and it goes to some Q goes and we, we, we when we flip I can redefine the zero so send that zero to some T okay so we have ln uh, Q over C e equals T over RC and I just realized I forgot a negative. So um, because this is a negative dQ dt, this should be negative here as well and negative out here. And so this should be negative. And so you get Q equals C E times E to the negative T over RC, right? And then I because we know that I is negative dQ dt is C E, well, okay, C cancels out. So we have E over R, E to the negative T over RC. And that's how you solve an RC circuit that is discharging. Now for an RL circuit, Again, it starts out with writing out the delta V equals zero for that loop that you're saying. And so you have the battery, the resistor, and the inductor. Um, again, because you're going with current uh, around in your loop, I'm gonna go you know, clockwise. It's minus LDI dt. Um, and so, Again, there's no Q here because there's no charge anywhere. There's no capacitor. Q only makes sense on a capacitor. So all we have to find is the current. And to do that, we again isolate the I dt. And so that's epsilon minus I R over L. In the same vein, we divide the term with I Uh, so we get uh, 1 over L dt, and we integrate from what we want. Let's say we have I at 0, so um, we know that the inductor at the beginning, the current is 0 because that's how an inductor behaves, so it's 0 to some current as a function of time. It goes from zero to some time. Okay, and so now when we integrate that, we should get O oh, negative one over R. Yeah, one over R. L N uh, epsilon minus I R epsilon. So again, negative one over R is from 
when we integrate i, right? So if you if you just take a derivative of what I wrote down here, uh, you should be able to confirm that this is the correct integral. On the left side, and so on the right, so you get t over l. And so what you should get is that uh, I, I can't do this quick mind math. Okay, hold on, I have to do it out. So uh, epsilon, or actually we could do one minus I R over epsilon is equal to E to uh, negative T over L over R. Mm, and the units work out. So one is unitless. Voltage over voltage, it's unitless, and E is unitless. So let's bring it up here. So we want to solve for I here. So we have I equals epsilon over R, 1 minus E to the negative T, L over R. And that's how you solve an RL circuit. And so if you notice, everything is very similar and for an rc circuit and an rl circuit whether these capacitors charging or discharging there's a general way to solve for the charge and the current so first you choose your loop usually it's just one loop because they have a um a switch there and you write down all of the um you know circuit parts and their uh, voltage drops so all of those voltage drops added together should equal zero. Then whatever you're solving for, so usually if there's a capacitor, you're solving for Q, so that's dQ dt. Or if there's only an inductor, then you're solving for I because there's no Q to be solved for. So isolate either di dt or dQ dt. Then divide, you know, once you have isolated, divide the fraction, right? So if you have, um, di dt equals, oh, I don't remember what it was, like e r something, right? Whatever this is, I think l. You're dividing this to the other side and having this to the other side. That's, that's what this um, step is. Then you want to integrate from the uh, initial conditions that you're given. So if you know that, for example, in the RL circuit, because the inductor at time equals zero always blocks the current, you know that you, on the left side, you want to integrate from zero to some i as a function of time. Or if uh, in the uh, discharging case, if you know the initial charge that the capacitor has, that initial charge to some charge as a function of time. Once you integrate it and be careful that you actually integrate correctly, Right, with all the negatives and constants that could probably, pos probably pop out. Then you want to isolate your variable and solve. And that should be how to solve in general for an RC or RL circuit. The LC circuit is a little special because it exhibits uh, simple harmonic, harmonic motion. And this is because the um, Kind of the assumption here is first you've charged up the capacitor, and so the capacitor has um, some charge on it already. And what happens is, at first there's no current, right? So first the inductor opposes any current, and then kind of lets off um, as time goes on. And then the capacitor starts to discharge, so this you know starts to discharge current, and the inductor feels the increase in current. Feeling the increase in current, it pushes back with the EMF. Eventually, that pushback is so is you know more than what the capacitor is putting out, and so the current the um, the current will eventually come back around this way and pile charge back onto the capacitor. Once the inductor gets used to the the change in current, then it'll start, you know, it'll it'll let off the gas and start accepting current again. 
And so it'll go back and forth between the capacitor and the inductor. That's kind of verbally, intuitively what happens. And so let's do the math. So we have delta V is Q over C. So if we're going counterclockwise, right, we're going from the negative plate to the positive plate. And so that's a positive Q over C. And then we're assuming that I goes to uh, counterclockwise first. And so we're going with current. And so that's minus L di dt. Next, in this assumption, we know that the current is negative dq dt. Why? Because the capacitor is discharging. And so first, you know, when we're doing this math, it's fine to think about just kind of like the first part where the capacitor is discharging and the inductor is kind of accepting this and then producing some back EMF. And so, right, so the capacitor is discharging, so I is negative dq dt, and we get that di dt is negative d squared dq dt squared, right? And so, Isolating that, we have dt equals negative uh, 1 over lc q. So now is simple harmonic motion. In simple harmonic motion, for any function x, uh, this should be negative, so for any function x, and any constant omega, if this is in, if you, if you can find a function x with that form, you can always guess that x is equal to a cosine omega t plus phi. And then you use initial conditions to find out what a and phi are. And so in this case, our omega is square root of 1 over LC. Okay? And our guess for Q is A cosine omega T plus phi. And so now we have to do some sleuthing to find out what A and phi are. So we know at Q T, whoops. Let's say at Q of T equals zero, um, let's assume that it is also C. So um, again, so when it is at A and it charges up, it charges up to the lovely CE that we know. And this, this can easily be done just by um, some quick delta V equals zero, right? So you have epsilon minus I, R minus Q over C equals zero. I know that when it's fully charged up, there's no more current flowing across the capacitor. And so there's no more voltage drop from that R. And if you do some math, you do this to the other side and find what um, the charge is, you get charge equals CE. Okay, so I'm going to erase that. So let's assume that we know that already. We did that in the last part. So if we know that at T equals zero, it equals CE, that means that A cosine phi equals CE. What A is, is the amplitude. And that means that it's the maximum charge that this capacitor will have. Since there's no current in this circuit, in this LC circuit that happens before, um, we know that the maximum charge this capacitor will have is Q or is CE. And so we know that A is equal to CE. And so phi has to equal zero, okay? And so from that, we say Q of T is equal to CE cosine 
omega t, where omega is what we found here, root of 1 over lc. Finding i, remember that we said that this is discharging, and so i is negative dq dt. And so when we find i, it's still, even though we're going from cosine to sine, it's c e omega sine omega t, where the negatives cancel out from the from the uh, derivative. And so just to review, the steps to solve an LC circuit. First, choose your loop and write down delta v equals zero. Then, uh, I didn't write this down, but you want to define i, right? Remember, i, if it's discharging, which is you, what, what you want to assume here in this circuit, is negative dq dt. And so di dt is negative d squared q over dt squared. Oh, I did write it. It's in the third one. Okay. And then once you get it into the form of the uh, x, uh, x double time derivative equals negative omega squared x, once you get into this form, then you assume that q is this. So I'm assuming that's, that's pot, you know, capital Q. You assume that, right? And then you solve for A and phi using initial conditions. And that's it. And so now I just want to do a really quick um, kind of concept question, but kind of a worked example to review everything that we've gone over here. So first assume the switch has been closed for a very long time at the top. And so we know that because the capacitor starts out as resistanceless wire and then, uh, you know, at the ver after a very long time, then it becomes, you know, n like no, nothing can pass through, no current can pass through. And so the current starts out as um, EMF over R. And then after a long time, it goes from E to the 2R, right? And so once it's been closed for a very long time, this is the current. Then the switch is opened. And then, you know, whatever charge is built up on here goes around this way because, you know, uh, current has been this way. And so positive charge builds up on our left and negative charge builds up on our right. And so once that's been opened, then I will flow this way. And so whether it's in the same direction or it's a different direction, we know that it is in the same direction. It goes from left to right. What we don't know is the magnitude, however, and that's because it depends on um, how much the capacitor is charged up. Let's do some math. So we know between any two points that delta V is the same. And so we know that the delta V of the capacitor that's charged up is always going to be equal epsilon minus I R, right? So between here, right? If we do this loop, this upper loop, this always has to be equal to zero. And so if the voltage drop has to be equal to how much this gained at the very top. And so um, if we know at the end, right, the end, because there's no more current flowing through here, the current is epsilon over 2r. Then the capacitor charges up to a potential difference of epsilon over 2. This is different from what usually happens when there's no r down here, right? Because it usually charges up to epsilon, and then the charge is c times epsilon. But in this case, because the R is here, the capacitor isn't the only way for charge for sorry for current to flow. 
And so if, you know, even, even after the charge, uh, the capacitor, sorry, is fully charged, there's still current flowing around this way that um, basically means that this delta V still exists. There's still a voltage drop. And if there's voltage drop here, then the voltage drop across the capacitor um, cannot be as much because again, everything still has to add up to zero. Um, and so once we get, once the switch opens, right? So we know the Delta V of the capacitor is epsilon over two minus I R is zero. The I is still epsilon over two R. And so the current from before and after are the same. So it remains the same. Um, and I think the lesson for this really is that even if you do have a little bit of intuition for how circuits work, it's always, so it's, it's okay. It's sometimes easier just to for, like uh, brute force the math. Um, I personally made a mistake on this when I first did it because you know I just assumed that it would charge up to CE and say it would double in the same direction. But um, after looking at the math, right, d working through delta V equals zero, making sure you know the delta Vs across any two intersections are the same, it's easy to see that it's not doubles, but it's in fact the same. All right, that's it. Um, that's it for circuits. I hope it helped. Sorry, it was so long. It's 30 minutes and see you next video.